Okay, we'll take a look now at a few absolute value inequalities. And you probably saw some things like this in Algebra 2 also. But um, let's look at some examples. And these aren't too hard as long as you remember what absolute value means. And a good way to think of absolute value is the distance from zero on the number line. So if the absolute value of something is less than 6, that means the distance from 0 is less than 6. So, so look at this. What if we had the absolute value of a is less than 6? Well, on the number line, here's 6 and here's negative 6. This means the distance from a to 0 has to be less than 6. So you could start at 0, and you could go 6 in this direction or 6 in this direction, but you have to stay within 6 units of 0 in order for the distance to be less than 6. So all of these numbers. Okay, except here in this problem, we don't have just a variable like a is less than 6. We have a little expression, 2x. The absolute value of 2x is less than 6. Okay, well, if the absolute value is less than 6, that means it has to be in this region. I'm going to go ahead and graph this. But that is not x. That is 2x. Absolute value of 2x is less than 6. So what I've graphed down here corresponds to the absolute value of 2x. But now I can interpret this graph pretty easily. Look at this. On the left side, this is all the numbers greater than negative 6. See, to the right of negative 6, and less than positive 6, to the left of positive 6. So that means this thing, 2x, has to be greater than negative 6, and 2x has to be less than positive 6. And now I have two little equations that I can solve pretty easily. Just divide by 2, and you get x is less than negative 3 and over here x or excuse me x is greater than negative 3 and x is less than positive 3 so this is what I'm trying to graph I'm not trying to graph a solution set for 2x I'm trying to graph a solution set for x so my solution my final final answer will look like this 0 I have to have numbers greater than negative 3 and less than positive 3 so this will be my answer. Use parentheses or an open circle if you're using the other, other notation. That indicates all the values from negative 3 to 3, not including negative 3 and 3. You could write it like this. Negative 3 is less than x is less than 3. Okay, next example. Absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than 5. Okay, then greater than 5, greater than 5. This means the distance from 0 of this thing, absolute value, that's what that means, is greater than 5. So on the number line, more than 5 away from 0 is all the numbers way out here to the right of 5 or way out here to the left of negative 5. If you were anywhere in this region or in this region, then your distance from 0 is greater than 5. So let's graph those for a second. All of these numbers and all of these numbers. x minus 2 has to be here or here. So that means that x minus 2 must be less than negative 5 or x minus 2 must be greater than positive 5. And now we have two little equations that we can solve fairly easily. Just add 2 to both sides, and we get x is less than, what is that, negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. x is less than negative 3, or over here we add 2 to both sides, and we get x is greater than 7. So that's it. That's the solution we want to graph. Let's just mark this negative 3, 0, 7 will be over here. We want all the numbers less than negative 3, like that, and all the numbers greater than 7. And we use the parentheses because we're not including the negative 3 or the 7. You could write it like this. You could say uh, negative 3 is less than x, or x is greater than 7. But it's actually more common to state it this way with the x on the left. 
Okay, one more. The absolute value of 4x minus 9 is less than or equal to 7. So when I read this, I think the distance from 0 of this thing is less than or equal to 7. And I can picture that in my mind. Here's 0. If I'm going to be a distance away from 0 that is less than 7, then I have to be in between negative 7 and positive 7. And this is less than or equal to. So this includes the negative 7 and the positive 7. Those are all the numbers that are less than 7 units away from 0. And in my original problem, I have the absolute value of this thing is less than or equal to 7. So this thing is graphed right there. 4x minus 9 is what is graphed right there. So you can see from this graph that 4x minus 9 has to be greater than negative 7 and also less than positive 7. So I'll write that. I'll write 4x minus 9 is greater than negative 7 and at the same time 4x minus 9 has to be less than positive 7. And then each of those can be solved. Add 9 to each side over here and you get 4x is greater than, let's see, what's negative 7 plus 9 is positive 2 and then divide both sides by 2. So x is greater than 1 half. And over here, we add 9 to each side, and we get 4x is less than 16. And then divide both sides by 4, and we get x is less than 4. So that's our answer. x is greater than 1 half and less than 4. So we can graph this now. Just mark off 1 half and 4. And all the numbers greater than 1 half are to the right of 1 half. Oh, this actually should be greater than or equal to. All of those little uh, inequalities through there should be greater than or equal to. So let me fix those. Okay. Which means we're going to be using uh, square brackets here. Greater than or equal to 1 half. And less than or equal to 4. and you could write it like this. You could say 1 half is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4.